हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम अगेन इन देवरत नॉलेज विला यू आर वाचिंग अवर वीडियो सीरीज ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम एंड लर्निंग सीपीयू शेड्यूलिंग टुडे इज आवर टॉपिक इज शेड्यूलिंग अल्गोरिथम देयर आर टोटल फोर टाइप्स ऑफ सीपीयू शेड्यूलिंग अल्गोरिथम दीज आर फर्स्ट वन इज फर्स्ट कम फर्स्ट सर्व सीपीयू शेड्यूलिंग अल्गोरिथम देन आफ्टर सेकंड वन इज शॉर्टेस्ट ऑफ फर्स्ट सीपीयू शेड्यूलिंग देन आफ्टर थर्ड वन इज प्रायोरिटी शेड्यूलिंग there is two types inside the priority scheduling that is preemptive priority scheduling and non preemptive priority scheduling and last technique is round robin cpu scheduling so let's see one by one first start with the first come first serve cpu scheduling what is going on in first come first serve scheduling like you learn the queue in terms of data structure whenever you learn the data structure so at the time you learn the queue Q is working on first in first out basis. It means whatever the element arrive inside the queue, that will uh, that element go outside first. Same thing here. Whatever the process arrived first, that process will serve first. Like you are going uh, going to a hotel for the dinner. So whatever the person reach at hotel first, that person will get a dinner first. They are generating a token system. Look like into the banking queue. Whenever you will. go to deposit the money or withdraw the money at bank so they are generating a token whatever the person arrived at bank first that person or customer will served first so same thing same fundamental is here whatever the number of processes are available into the ready queue but which process arrived first that process will get the cpu first this technique is known as a first come first serve cpu scheduling second one is shortest job first scheduling in this case whatever the number of process is small or which require cpu for the smaller amount of time that process will serve first like uh, three processes are there one process p1 is require cpu for the 5 millisecond p2 require cpu for the 10 millisecond and p3 require cpu for 15 millisecond so first process p1 will served because it will require cpu only for the 5 millisecond and it is a short job so that short job will uh, service first this technique is known as a shortest job first look like in street cricket whatever the younger boy is there that younger boy will bat first yes or not yeah <laughs> that's the same thing fundamental is here whatever the smaller process is there that process will serve first that technique is known as a shortest job first cpu scheduling third one is priority scheduling priority scheduling is uh, working on uh, basis of priority look like uh, in terms of vip culture whenever we will go to the temple so in famous temple or well known temple there is a, a very long queue uh, is there to enter inside the temple so there is a one vip queue is over there some vip people look like some hero zero in actor actress or uh, some ministers or some vip people can go directly inside the temple without uh, standing inside the queue so they are getting a higher priority get it same thing whenever we are uh, going whenever we are going to drive a vehicle so whenever any medical emergency or uh, ambulances arrive so we will uh, we will allot a uh, first priority to that vehicle for the pass away get it same thing there is two types inside the priority scheduling one is uh, preemptive priority scheduling and second one is non preemptive priority scheduling so what is preemptive priority scheduling in first case preemptive priority scheduling we can pre preempt the process it means whenever process is in execution so it in between the execution we can stop one process and we can allocate cpu to some other process so in terms of preemptive scheduling we can stop any process in between the execution get it uh, and another case that is non preemptive scheduling in terms of non preemptive scheduling we can't stop uh, process in between the execution we have to wait the completion of that process and then and then we can schedule the another process look like some physical activities like we want to go a washroom so we can't maintain a pressure for a very long time yes or no yes so we can't preempt some process so this thing is known as a non preemptive scheduling and last one is round robin scheduling 
राउंड रॉबिन इज जनरेटिंग सम अमाउंट ऑफ टाइम इट मीन्स इट इज बेसिकली वर्किंग ऑन टाइम क्वांटम लुक लाइक वेन एवर वी आर ड्राइविंग अ वेहीकल सो एट ए चौक देर इज अ सिग्नल इज ओवर देर सो सिग्नल इज गोइंग टू ओपन और इट इज जनरेटिंग ग्रीन लाइन फॉर फ्यू मिनिट्स लुक लाइक टू मिनिट्स और थ्री मिनिट्स देन आफ्टर आफ्टर पासिंग सम वेहीकल्स फॉर दी टू मिनिट्स और थ्री मिनिट्स अगेन इट विल जनरेट अ रेड लाइट एंड विट विल इट विल अलाउ द वेहीकल्स फ्रॉम द सेकंड लेन सेम प्रोसीजर विल बी फॉलोड बाय द सेकंड लेन सेकंड लेन आल्सो लाइक इफ देर इज अ टाइम क्वांटम ऑफ टू मिनट सो फॉर द टू मिनट लाइट इज ग्रीन एंड आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग टू मिनट अगेन लाइट गोइज टू रेड एंड इट विल अलाउ टू दी थर्ड लेन फॉर पासिंग अवे सो इन टू दी राउंड रॉबिन वी विल जनरेट अ पर्टिक्युलर एमाउंट ऑफ टाइम क्वांटम एंड वी विल अलाउ दैट पर्टिक्युलर प्रोसेस for the execution for that amount of time and after completion of that amount time uh, that process how to leave the cpu and cpu will be allocated to some another processes this technique is known as a round robin cpu scheduling before understanding this four types of cpu scheduling algorithm there is need to understand the parameter of processes if uh, you are till remain to watch the our earlier videos of state transition diagram so first understand the state transition diagram of process then and then you will be able to understand the cpu scheduling and types of uh, various types of methods of cpu scheduling first thing that is arrival time arrival time is look like whenever process is arrived into the uh, ready queue so that time is known as arrival time of process it means newly created process in terms of state transition diagram Uh, whereas a number of processes was created into the new state but processes is arriving from new state to ready state so whenever process become ready for the execution so this time is known as arrival time uh, same thing look like you are traveling into the train so whenever train is arrive at 7 am so 7 am is a arrival time of train and suppose train is a uh, start uh, its journey at a 7 uh, plus 7:10 uh, am or 7:15 am so it will be a departure time so at that time when train was arrived so train was arrived at 7 am so 7 am was the arrival time time of that process of that train same thing into the process into the case of process whenever process is arrived from new state to ready state so on that time when process arrived into the ready state that particular time is known as a arrival time next thing there is a response time after arriving a process into the ready state whenever that process will get the cpu that time is known as a response time look like if you are uh, chatting with your boyfriend or girlfriend whenever you are typing hi 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 and after typing five to seven times hi if someone replying to you hello how are you then that is your response get it so same thing whenever process is ready into the ready queue but till that moment process is not getting a cpu when process is getting a cpu that particular time is known as a response time for that process another thing is that is a burst time burst time it means how much time process require a cpu look like you are traveling from ahmedabad to baroda and uh, it is taking a 2 hours or 3 hours so that 3 hours is known as a journey time same thing particular process require a cpu for 10 millisecond so 10 millisecond is a burst time of that particular process so indirectly we can say that burst time is a amount of time uh, on how much time process require a cpu next thing that is a completion time Uh, when process is completing its entire execution uh, like whenever we are traveling ahmedabad to baroda so whenever uh, we are going to reach baroda like we are going to reach baroda at 8 pm at uh, evening so 8 pm is our uh, reaching time of baroda same thing if process uh, started its execution at 7 am and it is completing its execution at 7:30 am so 7:30 am will be the completion time for that process so uh, we can say that when process is completing its entire execution so that particular time is known as a completion time for that process next thing turn around time turn around time is total amount of time 
that process pending during the execution look like from arrival time to completion time it means whenever process arrived up to that moment from this moment it means arrival time to completion time this entire duration is known as a turnaround time if we want to calculate this duration from arrival time to completion time so we can subtract uh, arrival time from the completion time it means if we will do ct minus 80 so we will get the this entire duration from the arrival time to completion time or in other words we can say that it is burst time plus waiting time so what is waiting time so whenever uh, there is a response time it after few moments process is getting a response from arrival time to response time so arrival time to response time this duration is known as a waiting time it means at that moment process is waiting for the response of cpu when process will get the response from cpu so process will start its execution and it will complete at some amount of time so that time is known as a completion time so uh, actually waiting time is in between the arrival time to response time this duration is known as a waiting time and response time to completion time this duration is known as a burst time so indirectly we can say that here turnaround time is also a burst time plus waiting time it means out of this total time some am some amount of time process is executing and some amount of time process is waiting for the cpu get it and the waiting time is whenever process is actually arrived but process is waiting for the response from the cpu so that amount time is known as a waiting time so after understanding this parameters of process into the next session i will teach you the various types of cpu scheduling in detail like implementation of fcfs implementation of sjf implementation of priority and implementation of round robin algorithm so till that moment uh, hope you allow me and hope you are getting very well from my side thanks for watching devrat knowledge villa thank you very much